My name is Randy Pitchford. I am the president of Gearbox Software and executive producer of Duke Nukem Forever. The thing about this game, yes, it's been in development a long time, but there's always been a, a core of very passionate, very talented developers, always trying to push things to the next level and succeeding in many respects. And every time I've ever had an opportunity to look at the game, there's always been amazing, incredible bits, stuff that's just uh, fun and over the top and scenes like I've never seen before. And I say, kill them all. You know, the art direction for Duke Nukem has always been sort of an exaggerated realism. Like the colors are a little more vibrant, but, um, and, and, and maybe there's, you know, more um, highlights or accents or little, you know, flashes on the surfaces or on the edges of things to uh, make it kind of hyper real almost. But it's, it's definitely rooted in a more realism art, art direction. This is taking forever. Time to stop pissing around and get this big guy back into action. I think that Duke's greatest achievement, Duke 3D's greatest achievement, was actually the game design. I think up until Duke 3D, we had, had we had been playing, if, if the few shooters we'd played, we had played them in environments that were kind of nondescript, um, whereas Duke finally took it to a real world. Now, Duke's world isn't our world, it's kind of like a fun house mirror reflection of our world. It's very much like our world, but it's almost like an upside down topsy-turvy version of our world. So, when we're in that world, and looking through uh, through the lens of, of our understanding to see what his world looks like, it's very funny to us, and so we were very we're amused. Uh, the gameplay itself, though, is is, is really um, it, it was really far ahead of its time in terms of uh, what shooters can do. First of all, you had a, a wide spectrum of tools and weapons in, in Duke's arsenal, and this allowed for all kinds of interesting new kinds of gameplay. Instead of only being about you know getting your cursor on the enemy and pulling the trigger with a reaction time skill test that's faster than what it takes for that guy to make your health go down. To zero. Now you're doing things like laying traps with trip mines, and you're 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 shrinking people and stepping on them, and you're you're you know freezing guys and, and breaking them into little ice cubes, and you're and you're basically um, using all these tools in tandem uh, to find all kinds of ways to overcome the challenges. The other great thing about that that original game design was it was not just about killing the enemy. There were other things to do in Duke. After clearing a room of these aliens, you then had to figure out how to move to the next section. And oftentimes there was an environment challenge, like, man, there's the door, but there's something blocking it. And I have to figure out, you know, if I, oh, maybe if I nudge this and I can knock that out of the way and then I can get through, or maybe if I get that in the way and I blow that up, it'll create, it'll create a hole for me, you know? And, you, and you're kind of using almost like a cognitive test to, to navigate the environment. And along the way, you find secrets and all kinds of fun jokes. Duke Nukem Forever uh, succeeds by understanding what was great there, and delivering on a worthy successor to all that fun. So of course, all the, all the humor and all the titillation is there, and all those things that make us go, I just have to see what's going to happen next. That's all there for us. But at the same time, it's a very intelligent game that, 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 that uh, balances very satisfactorily um, a pacing between the, you know, hardcore action and action skill test gameplay with a sort of cognitive gameplay. And then off to the side of that, that main loop, you have you know, interactive things, like everything from being able to play a fully functional pinball machine to working out in Duke Nukem's gym, actually lifting weights and, and beefing yourself up, like all this kind of alternate gameplay on one side. And then the discovery of secrets and hidden areas and kind of surprises on the other. And those are kind of like tangential to the main loop. My favorite thing, man, well, okay, I, I don't want to give any spoilers away, but I will tell you this, there are so many memorable moments. Um, I, I think one of the, the things that, that, that just kind of, it's more meta than just a, a particular moment, because there's so many moments, I, and I don't want to call any of them out at the risk of surprising anyone, or, or ruining anyone's surprise, but the, the thing that, that I really love is, is, is the, 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 the opportunities that come from Duke's unique arsenal. The, the, it's just, it's totally uh, almost absent in shooters these days. In fact, you know, a lot of the other shooters I've, 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 I'm playing now, everything's devolving to just being about ballistic weapons. It's just like cursor, skill test kind of stuff. Put my, put my cursor over the guy and, you know, react before he gets me. And, and you know, uh, there's nothing more gratifying than, you know, shrinking down a pig and stepping him into a little mushy bit of paste, you know, or, or um, uh, uh, sh the real the rail gun, you know, it's just shooting three guys in a row through a wall, you know, and then having their heads explode when they get, you know, the the the, the rail gun has kind of like a a microwave effect and it'll make people's heads 
explode. It's, cool. it's pretty cool. <laughs> but like that kind of alternate gameplay, those kinds of tools and weapons and the, the things that can emerge from that, it's, it's, we haven't had that in a long time. So Pipe bombs and trip wires, traps with trip wires, great stuff. You, you can't have a true, honest successor to Duke Nukem Forever without you know, paying off all of our fond memories, right? We must have trip mines and, and pipe bombs and all those things and holodukes and steroids and all that, all that fun stuff. At the same time, though, if that's all you have, then we're not being surprised and excited by new things. So there has to be some new things thrown into the mix as well. And uh, Duke Forever delivers on both points. You know, I was looking on YouTube the other day and I was kind of looking at all the trailers for all the upcoming games and I was just astonished. You know, Duke Nukem Forever's trailer uh, was the first kind of video asset for the new Duke Nukem Forever was released just a couple of weeks ago. And um, uh, it is, it's already uh, has more hits on YouTube than any other trailer for any other video game that isn't out yet. And it was just, it's just, so, so like, there's going to be a lot of demand for it. And I'm really just excited that Duke gets to have this moment. And I feel both gratified and humbled that I get to have the seat that I have in helping to make that happen. But ultimately, I feel like, I think I feel like every Duke fan out there where I finally get to play the game that, that I've been, that this ridiculous game that's been going on for so long with this absurd development cycle, we're finally gonna, you know, get to the end of that story and have that experience. And it feels great to be able to pay that off. Mm. All right, time for my reward. The wait is almost over, and I can't wait. I can't wait till this moment when it launches, but it's almost over. We're almost there. You wanna touch it, don't you?